Hello and welcome to this tutorial. So what I'm going to show you how to do in this video is how you can embed social share buttons in your project slash website. So with social share buttons, the user can easily share the content on the current page or the content of a page you specify by clicking the button and that's going to prepare a post that they can share with their friends in their social network. So here I'm sharing an article from my website because the social share buttons here are not embedded in a page of content because I want to keep the tutorial simple, but I will be showing you how you can do that entering the URL dynamically. So it's the current page, not a page that I've hard coded like this. So I'm going to show you how you can code this now using just HTML, CSS and JavaScript and a little bit of help from the font or sub library, which is where I'm getting the icons from. So the first thing you need to do in code is to create a new HTML document. And the first thing you should do is to import the font awesome library into your project. So you can use those icons that I had in the preview. So the way that you do that is to insert a valid CDN link to font awesome into the head of your document. So this one is from CDN JS. If you Google font awesome five CDN, for me, it was the first result that came up, you could use a CDM from another provider, but I'm going to go with this one. And then you want to make sure it's font awesome five. So it can be the latest version of five and then copy that link tag. And then it's ready to just paste into your document like I have here. Now there is a new font awesome six available, but it is still very new. And I prefer sticking with the more mature version five. But if you want to do this, with version six, it would still work, although you might have to make some changes to the classes of the elements down below, which you will see in a moment. So I'm talking about these classes here. So you would need to update these to font awesome six, but let me first explain this markup to you. So the really important bit here is this div with the ID of share buttons, because this contains the four icons, which are all wrapped in an A element, which is a link element, but you will notice that there's no link actually inserted on any of them. And that's because we are going to be inserting that dynamically using JavaScript to be either the current page or a page that you specify. Now you'll notice that the icons are contained in these I elements. So I doesn't stand for icons. It stands for italics, but font awesome advises using I elements for the icons. And that is because it's shorter than span and generally it's not used. EM is preferred for making some text uh, italic. So it's up to you. You could actually use a span element and it would work just as well. But I'm going with the standard recommendation of using the I element. Now, just in case you're wondering where the icons are, so we haven't linked to any of them using the SRC attribute, we've just entered a class for each of them. So this is how Font Awesome works. You give the element a class name, which is recognized by Font Awesome. And if it's installed in your project, then the icon will load from the library. So with this code alone, the icons will already appear on screen like this. But when I click on them, nothing's happening. And that's because the A tag for each of them lacks a href attribute. So I'll show you how to insert that with JavaScript now. So you can share either the current page or a specified page of your choice. So I'm going to insert a script tag here. And the first thing I'm going to do in my script is to set the link to what it is I want to share. So for the current page, you set this to window.location.href and that is going to save the value of the current URL inside link. So usually this works, but occasionally due to some strange characters, something can get lost in translation between the URL and getting it in JavaScript. So to prevent that, we want to wrap this in encode URI, and that's going to take care of any special characters for you. Now for some of the platforms we'll be sharing to, you can add an optional message or title to the article. So I'm going to create those here now. So with a message, you want to use encode URI component. The difference between encode URI and encode URI component is use the component when it's not 
a URL, but it's going to be part of a URL. So in this case, it's going to be a message and it's going to be, hey, I found this article and the title, I'm actually going to just get that from the document. So I can do that with the query selector. If I say document.querySelector and it's the title element and I want to get the text content there. So I'm going to log all three of these things to the console so you can see their values. I'll place them in an array just so you can see where one ends and another begins. So if I open the console now, you'll see the three values. The link, this is to a local destination. In practice, this would be the URL of the website where you embed these social icons. So it actually looks pretty normal, and that's because there were no special characters, so not much encoding was necessary there, if any. I don't think there was any encoding necessary for the link. So we're going to be using all three bits of this information now to create query strings that we're going to be sending to each one of the social network. So that's the reason that the encoding was so important because these bits of information are going to be part of a URL. Okay, so let's start with Facebook. So I want to select the link element for Facebook. So I gave each one of those a class, which was just the name of the platform. So now I've got the Facebook link element. What I'm going to want to do on that element is set the href attribute to a request I'm going to make to Facebook to share the current page. So because href is a standard attribute, I can set it by simply saying .href, and I'm going to create a string using template literal syntax. So that's backticks there. And the reason is I'm going to be embedding inside this link some of the values that we created just a moment ago. So for each of the social networks, they have their own accepted format for how a query string should look like to be able to share something on their platform. You can usually find that in their official documentation or in some developer files elsewhere, but you don't need to worry for the social networks that I've included here because I'm going to be showing you the accepted format at least at the time of recording this video. So for Facebook, the accepted query string it looks like this, where you need to replace this with the link that you want to share. So because this is a template literal, I'm going to use this special syntax here. This is going to escape the string so that I can include the value of link inside it and it's going to do the concatenation for me. So I'm hoping this is already working. Let's see. So I refresh and I can click on the Facebook icon, but you can see I get an error here. So href should represent a valid URL. The problem is that we're still using the current page and I'm working locally here. So this isn't a page that you can share. So what I'm going to do in my code is make a slight change to the value of link. Instead of that being the current page, I'm going to set that to the value of the URL of an article that exists on my website. So a little bit of shameless self-promotion there. Main thing is that it works. So if I click on the Facebook icon now, it's trying to share this article and I can write a message there and then below I can post that to Facebook sharing it with my social network. Now, the good thing is that for the other networks, it's pretty much the same process, just using a different query string. So as I mentioned, each one has its own particular string that they accept. So you can't just modify the Facebook one and it's going to work for Twitter. You have to know what kind of URL they are expecting. So, so I'll select the Twitter link element. So again, I'm setting the href. So the accepted query string format for Twitter is like this. You have a URL that you can enter here. So that's again going to be link like before. 
You can also optionally add some text to the post that you're going to share. So I'll enter the value of message in there. And finally, hashtags. So I didn't create a variable containing hashtags, but I'll add some now. So you just add those in a comma separated list. I'll just add those two in this example. Now let's see if that is working. So you see this time I get, hey, I found this article. So the message I wrote plus the URL with the hashtags as well at the end there. Okay, so that is how you would share a page via Twitter. Now for the final two social networks, I'm not going to go into as much detail. I'm just gonna copy and paste something I prepared earlier. So it's exactly the same process, except they have their own accepted format for the query string. For LinkedIn, it's like this with the link inserted at the end there. And for Reddit, you have the link and you can also insert a title which will come up in your post. So I'll show you both of those live in action. If we take a look at LinkedIn, this is going to have the article. You can then choose to share it in a post or send as a private message. And with Reddit, it's going to create a link post and you can see the title here has already been written in for you. That's the text inside the title element of the HTML. So that is now a functional version that you can embed on your own pages. If you want to add more social networks, you'll find that Font Awesome usually has icons for those too. And you just need to make sure that you find the query string format you need and what necessary information you need to include. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content just like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.